All right, back with the KTM 450. Last video on this thing, um, I was asking you guys, you know, if it was an EXC or what kind of bike this was. A lot of people said it was a 450 EXC. I did a little research on my own and found out that in 2002, they didn't make 450s, they only made 400s. So I think this bike might be a 400cc, not a 450. And the 10th digit on the van is a two, so I know it's a 2002. Unless it's a 2003 and they just made it late in 2002, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, a lot of people said this was a 450 EXC, so I'm kind of assuming that's what it is based on the comments. Um, last video, we got this thing. Um, I think I picked it up for 1300 bucks. So we got this thing for $1,300. It uh, didn't really run that great, but uh, we cleaned out the carburetor and stopped the gas from leaking from the carburetor. So the gas is leaking from the carburetor and flowing into the engine. Um, the previous owner had put O-ring gaskets on the screws. So I'm assuming that the gas was coming out, overflowing from the gasket area by the carburetor. And uh, I don't think he replaced that O-ring seal in the seat where the needle goes in the carburetor. We uh, replaced that and the gas stopped leaking and this thing fired right up. We also took a look at the one-way bearing. I was making a little noise. So we took off this cover and we found that one of the gears was kind of out of place. We pushed that back in and uh, we really haven't heard too much noise. It clicks back a little bit, but a lot of people in the comments said that was pretty normal for KTM. So I'm not really sure, you know, if that one-way bearing's good or not. It felt good when I was in there and it only rotated one way. It didn't rotate both ways. So we'll see, but I did get the one-way bearing right here, came in the mail. So, I mean, if we have to replace it, we have it. And I ordered it for a 400 EXC because I couldn't find one for a 450 in 2002. So it was kind of a guess, but we'll see if it works today. But yeah, the plan is to take this riding, test drive it on the road and on trails and just see kind of how it runs, how it performs and uh, kind of go from there. Uh, last video, when I first picked this thing up, it had heating issues, so it would overheat and that coolant would be coming out over the overflow. But I think we got rid of that problem because I think it was overheating because it was so lean. So we left out last video where we were charging the battery and waiting for the one-way bearing to come. So I want to see if this battery has enough juice to crank it over and if it dies quickly. If it dies quickly, we know the battery's junk and uh, obviously if it doesn't crank it over, the battery's junk. So. Let's kind of start out there and kind of listen to any noise in the clutch area for that one-way bearing just to see if that's bad. And we'll kind of go from there diagnosing this thing. So to start this thing up, we've just got the start button right here. You can hear it go with the electric start. And there's an off button right here. For the choke, a lot of people left comments on this. The choke is actually through this little hole in the gas tank, which is like, again, over engineering, why I put a hole in the gas tank, just cut off the gas tank right here. Like, <laughs> none of it really makes sense, but, all right, so you pull out the choke underneath here and then you turn it off, you can just poke through that hole so you can kind of hear it come on. So for first start, we'll pull the choke out, it'll click in place, the gas is on, and then we just hit the start button and hopefully it starts up. No smoke, that's good. We're gonna turn off the chill. Idling pretty good. No noises from the top end. Oop, and it just
just shut off. So I don't know why it keeps on shutting off like that. I think it was just getting low idle, I'm guessing. I'll turn up the idle a little bit. There's a little idle adjuster right here on the carburetor. Let's turn that up a tad. Let's see. Starts right back up though. Let's just see if we hear anything when we start it back up. You can hear the click at the end there, but a lot of people in the comments said that was normal. So let's just keep an eye on it. I'm gonna start it back up, see if you guys hear anything. You can hear that click at the end. Hopefully that's normal, but when you start it up, you don't hear anything weird. So I'm guessing the one-way bearing's fine. Just a little click. I'm not sure what that would be. Yeah. So I'm assuming the one way bearing is fine if it continuously starts up like that. I think the battery was just really, really drained. And uh, like you guys said in the comments, I think it was uh, seizing with gas in the engine. And that's why the starter wasn't working. And that's why the battery wore out because the guy kept on trying to crank it over and it was just having too much compression to turn it over, which had just drained the battery. That's kind of my assumption um, because the oil looked good, everything else looked good on this thing. So I don't think it was a problem with the one-way bearing. I don't think. But uh, we have one just in case, just in case something goes wrong, we can always replace it. But for now, I think we're gonna keep it like that because we haven't had one single issue with it. Let's just start it up one more time to make sure. I mean, that's pretty good. No noises or anything. All right, so what we're gonna do next is just kinda test and see if the battery's charging. Because I'm kinda wondering why the battery did die if the bike was running, unless the guy just kept on cranking it and it eventually died. To test out the battery, we have to start up the machine, and then we're gonna test the voltage coming out of the battery. It should be above like 14, or right around 14. All right, we have our voltmeter here. Turn that to on. We're gonna look at DC voltage, and then just hook up one of the leads to here, one to here, and we're at 12.7 right now. That is what the battery is at, so. That's pretty good for the battery. It should be between 12 and 13. So we're gonna start it up and it should be above 12.7 if it's charging properly. See it went up to 13.4, so it's charging. So we're back down to 12.9. So when we started up, we're at 13.3, and it continuously goes up because it was going up to 13.4, and so on. So 
I think the charging system's working. So I kind of want the headlight to work. So last video we saw that the wires were kind of pulled out right here and then right here. So I'm not sure why they disconnected them, but we're gonna connect them back up and just see if that light works, cause that'd be kind of cool. I'm not sure where you control it. <laughs> if there's like a switch or if it automatically comes on, I'm not sure, but let's connect those up and just see what happens. All right, these wires are all taped off, you can see. So there's a white, a green, a blue, and a brown. Let's see if they match up to these over here. Doesn't look like they're going to. So there's a yellow, a brown, and a white. So what we might do is get some alligator clips and just kind of test it. Um, we don't want to fry anything, so. <laughs> oh, that wire just came right out. Looks like it was melted at one point or something. And then these wires over here. So obviously we'll, we'll go brown to brown, white to white. I'm not sure what yellow is gonna go to yet. I'm guessing that's a positive wire. Could be a negative too, I'm not sure. To white. Probably should use the white wire for the white. <laughs> okay, brown to brown. brown. We're gonna do yellow to green for now. Just see what that does for us. Leave blue open. Not sure what the blue one does. I'm guessing one's high and low. But uh, we'll start her up. See if we get any lights to turn on here. Looks like the low light is the only one that works. I think the high beam, it's not burnt out, it doesn't look like. Looks like the filament is still in there. Let's get these zip ties cut off. So it looks like for the low beam, it's the brown and green. So that's the white. So brown, and then green is going to white, so yellow. So it looks like the, 
The yellow is probably positive. Let's see what's going on behind here. Maybe a wire pulled out or something. Doesn't look like it. Green is ground. All right, I see what's going on. See these prongs, they're not hitting the bottom of the light bulb. That's why it wasn't making contact. If you push them in a bit further, now they're making contact. So it just wasn't in all the way. Pretty sure that was the problem. All right, headlight's still not working. I don't know what's going on with that. Oh yeah, we got her. Woohoo! All right, so we finally got it to work. So white is going to white, that's correct. Um, we've got brown, brown is going to green. And then we've got the yellow going to the brown. <laughs> so brown doesn't go to brown, brown goes to green. Brown is the ground. <laughs> and yellow is the positive feeding into the blue and the brown. So brown on the white is positive, blue on the light's positive, this one's ground. And it's kind of like the opposite on the wires over here, so. But we finally got it, so let's get this all wired up and hooked back up. All right, all the wiring is done. Let's see if it works. Light is fixed. That's awesome. I think this thing is ready to be test driven. All right, we're gonna quick test out the bike around uh, my property at my house here. Just quick see if she goes through all the gears and stuff like that before taking it to the land and on the road. It's starting to rain too. Let that warm up for a little bit, then we'll, we'll take her for a ride around the yard. bogging down a little bit. I don't know what's going on with it. Kind of weird. Alright, so first test drive didn't go so well. So when you rev it, it like kind of bogs out and it, and it kind of almost feels like it's hitting the rev limiter like right away. So it's very, very odd. Um, I tried disconnecting the light again to see if that was messing up something with the CDI, but it still does the same thing. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. It was revving out in neutral. It's just very odd. It could be a foul plug, I guess, um, causing the issue. So we'll try changing the plug, see if that helps at all. All right, we got the plug out. Let's just take that out now. See what that looks like. Oh, it's pretty black. You can see how black that tip is. So I wonder if it fouled out. No gas on the cylinder, so we should be good. Let's just see when we turn over the engine here. Doesn't seem to be that bad. Hmm. 
What kind of plug is it? It's kind of like a special one. NGK CR8EK. Let's see if I have one like that. I don't think I do, but uh, we can quick run to O'Reilly's and grab one. All right, could not find a spark plug in my spark plug bin. So we had to go get some new ones. Of course, they didn't have the NGK CR8EK. So we had to get the Autolite 4303 plug. So instead of the two tips, it's got the one. You can see, pretty similar plugs, but I got two of them just in case. But yeah, that one was really, really black. And then we can actually test and see how it's running. Um, once we install that, kind of do like a plug chop. Brand new plug going in. We got to take off the cap here. Drop that in. All right, here we go. What do you guys think? Think it'll be better? Sounds like it might be better. Let's go test drive it. All right, so it was not a fault plug. That did not fix the problem. <laughs> um, it's still doing that. You could hear it. It's just like, you give a throttle, it hesitates, goes a little bit, and then kind of breaks up. So, yeah, it's not sounding too good. Not good at all, actually. Not sure what's going on with this thing. All right, I tried messing with the, the fuel screw and then took it for another test drive and no change. So I'm gonna check and see if that accelerator pump's working on the carburetor. I wanna make sure it's shooting that gas in there. All right, we got the carburetor off. I'm gonna show you if that, that is working in there. See that squirt? So it is in fact working. Huh. I don't know why that would have a low end bog like that. Might take it apart one more time and just see what jets we have in there. All right, so far carburetor's looking clean. Everything was in place. So I don't think there's any issue with the carburetor. I'm gonna look up the jets, just see if they're maybe a little bit rich, but I'm guessing they're stock. Main jet's 172, pilot's a 48. It sounds stock to me, but I'll, I'll look up to confirm. All right, so it looks like these are the stock jets. 48 for the pilot and the um, 172 is stock for this bike. All right, clean up the carburetor. It runs a little bit better. Um, I noticed that the gas was on on and not reserve, so it wasn't getting much gas. So I, I also changed that over and it seems to be doing a lot better. It's still a little bit boggy, a um, little hesitation, but it does uh, rev out completely now at uh, full throttle, so that's good, I guess. But uh, let's go to the land and take this thing for a little rip. Maybe it'll get better as we warm it up. All right, it's the next morning. Made her out here. And uh, looks like it's gonna rain here pretty soon, so it'll be nice to get the ride in. 
Um, we're gonna do a ride on the road, I think, and a ride on the trails, since this is technically an enduro. All right, let's see if she fires up today. Choker, turn the gas on. Should fire right up. All right, well that first ride went uh, really, really bad. Um, it's just bogging big time. Is the pipe clogged or something? Doesn't look like it. There's no spark arrest or anything in there. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know what it could be. It just sounds really rich to me. I'm wondering if the accelerator pump is spraying too much fuel into the carburetor, bogging it out. Because when you do the throttle, you can see the pump pushing down. That's what I'm thinking. I can hear the coolant bubbling too. So the coolant's definitely hot in there. Seems like it's boggier and boggier as it runs. Very, very strange. I've never had this with a bike before. All right, here we go. First ride on the KTM 400 EXC. I believe it's a 400 because in 2002, they made the 400s, not the 450s. So I'm assuming it's a 400. But uh, yeah, this bike is pretty big. <laughs> I'm not super comfortable on it yet. So it's gonna take a while to get used to it. But you'll hear the low end bog where you give a throttle and kind of bogs. But really can't do much about it. I went through the carburetor, went through the whole system. So I don't know what the problem could be here, but you'll hear it. Starts right up. The one way bearing is doing really well. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, idles perfectly, hasn't overheated, so, I don't know, it is a mystery for sure. It's already warmed up, so, let's take it for a little, little ride. See how it like kind of hits, hits the rev limiter there? Should have a lot more power than that. We'll go through here. Yeah, it just sounds really bad. <laughs> It's got power once in a while, but other times it doesn't. Oh, turkey! Ah. <laughs> Almost hit a turkey. That thing flew high. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful around here for turkey and deer going through the trails. They're everywhere. It's such a big bike too. It's hard to handle. Probably more coming out through here. 
I saw him on my way in. We'll go back. We'll go through here. What the heck? Yeah, I'm definitely not comfortable on this bike. It's just like too big. I don't really like it. See how it hits the rev limiter? Super weird. It's like not revving out all the way. It's not sound very good. Unless that's how it's supposed to be. I don't think so though. <laughs> Just not, it's not sound good. Here's the trail. This thing is just like so sporadic. <laughs> really does not sound good. We'll have to take her on the road and just kind of hear it. Like once in a while it opens up like that and uh, you're like, oh, it's fixed. But then, I don't know, in first, second, third gear, it's really weird. And suspension is really, really bad on this thing. I need a break, my ribs are killing me. My ribs are like on fire from this thing really rattling me around here. Oh, this thing is kind of a piece of crap, not gonna lie. I don't know what the problem could be. Not sounding good. What the heck? This road right here is 60 miles an hour. I don't even know if we can get up to 60 miles an hour with this thing. I don't know. Like worse and worse here. There we go, we're on the road. That is not sounding good. Yeah, definitely not running right here.
that was a bad ride. All right, Vinny's here to help. You think we can figure out the problem with this thing, Vin? What do you think? <laughs> Wanna come help? Come on, what do you think it is? What do you think the problem is? All right, so we got the spark plug out here. Let's see if it was running rich. Grab the plug out here. And, yeah, it looks pretty black. Look at that. It's definitely running pretty rich. Definitely not lean. <laughs> it's pretty black. Pretty, pretty black. What do you think, Finn? Look at that. Look at the plug. Yeah, it's pretty black, isn't it? What do you think? Running rich? What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I'd say it's running rich. Hmm. So, I think it's getting too much fuel somewhere, causing it to bog down. I think it's gotta be that accelerator pump pushing too much fuel through, is my guess. But if anyone knows or has any idea what the problem would be, leave a comment down below. I'm kind of stumped on it because it's got the stock jetting in it. So, I don't know, it's very, very odd. But uh, anyway, we're gonna end it there for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know we uh, didn't get it fixed up, but we're close. I think it's just running rich and it's just sputtering out. But that's my assumption, so. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.